Also tonight, the search continues for this man. Police say he took off with his four-year-old son hours before a woman was found dead in a south side apartment. After an Amber Alert, the little boy was found safe more than 750 miles away from Jacksonville with a family member in Maryland. Right now, police want to talk to Norris Dale. Court records show he's been in a contentious relationship with Cynthia Aviez, who is the child's mother. At this point, police have not confirmed whether Aviez is the woman who was killed. We do know investigators have turned their focus to what went on inside that apartment where the couple and the child were living. Police have not revealed how the woman died, but they have confirmed foul play was involved. We have a team of reporters gathering new information on the investigation. We're also digging through the couple's history. We start with Channel 4's Heather Lee, who is joining us live from the apartment complex. Heather, how long were detectives there tonight? Well, Tom, the crime scene was just beyond this fence that you see right here. I'm actually in the parking lot of the apartment complex next door, and it was just beyond these two apartments that you see right back here, just beyond this alleyway. But this is a very large apartment complex, and a good portion of it was taped off with crime scene tape. And even after the woman's body was taken away from the scene, investigators remained out here for another two hours or so processing the scene. It's difficult to look at a picture snapped the moment investigators wheeled the body of a woman found dead in her apartment out to be taken to the medical examiner's office. Police haven't confirmed the woman's name, but we know 26 year old Norris Dale was living at the apartment and when police showed up, he wasn't there. While police say they don't have a suspect, they do want to talk to Dale. He's definitely a person of interest because he did take the child and he was seen leaving the apartment. But how does he tie in with the physical evidence? That's what they're trying to connect. His four-year-old son was also gone. An Amber Alert was issued for the boy around 3 p.m. 35 minutes later, police say they got a call from family members in Maryland saying he was safe. Some wonder why it took several hours for FDLE to issue the alert. News for Jack's crime and safety analyst Gil Smith says certain criteria needs to be met in order to issue one, and that takes time to gather. They have to make sure that an abduction did occur. Um, make sure that the child is um, in danger, believe that it's in danger, and of course under um, 18 years of age. And also they need to have the suspect information, the person who may have abducted the child, also um, tag and vehicle information. Smith says aside from looking at any security cameras in the area and speaking to neighbors, they will speak with family as well as that four-year-old boy to try and get more information on where Dale could be. Now, police say he is most likely driving the victim's car, which is a 2000 Mitsubishi Gallant with plate number 1BK9546. And if you know where Dale is, you are asked to either call 911 or you can call the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. And that is all posted on our website, news4jax.com. For now, we're live. Heather Lee, Channel 4, the local station. Thank you, Heather. We have done some digging into the couple's past and found repeated instances of domestic violence in their relationship. Tonight, Channel 4's Francesca Amaker checked with a local domestic violence help center to get some insight on how much benefit there is, if any, to a protection order from a judge. Fran? Tom, you know, we looked at those documents and they weren't specific when it came to what the incidents were. But tonight we did speak with a specialist with domestic violence and she told us how beneficial protective orders can really be. Our investigation at this point has led us to believe that foul play is suspected in this case. Once the body of a woman was found inside this Southside apartment, News for Jax quickly discovered the man and woman who lived there with their child had a troubled past. The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office has not released the victim's name, but they did say they believe the woman killed is the girlfriend of 26-year-old Norris Dale and possibly the mother of Norris Dale Jr. Court documents show Cynthia Avilas filed for custody of Norris Dale Jr. in April of 2015. In May, Norris Dale was charged with domestic violence. That same month, Avilas requested a protective order, but it was denied, and in July 2015, it was denied again. Normally, there isn't proof in domestic violence cases when you're going for an injunction, um, because too much of what happens uh, happens in the privacy of the home, and often any bruising is where um, it can't show easily. Ellen Seiler is CEO of Hubbard House, where women in domestic violence situations seek help. In this couple's case, both injunctions were denied for lack of evidence. But Siler says oftentimes the judge hears both sides and tries to make the best call at the moment. Unfortunately, there's only so much a piece of paper can do. An injunction for protection can be a valuable tool 
if the abuser cares about the consequences of their actions. If they are determined to kill you, it is not going to help. In the summer of 2015, documents show the couple was in mediation in a custody case. And in August of last year, the couple was given joint custody of Dale Jr. There's no evidence that shows when the abuse began, but Siler warns anyone in a domestic violence situation to seek help. Once violence enters into the relationship, if there's not intervention, that violence is going to be repeated. And Ms. Seiler says if you are in a domestic violence relationship, it's important to get out. The first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you leave the home when the abuser is not there. And of course, the best thing you can do is seek out some place like the Hubbard House to help. For now, reporting live at JSO headquarters, Francesca Amaker, Channel 4, The Local Station.